Hey guys, so today we are going to review Chicago Fire Season 2, Episode 2. Uh, the episode is called Prove It. I personally liked this better than last week's. Um, I'm, I, don't, I can't really say why, I feel like there was just more stuff going on that was, you know, more exciting and I don't know. Um, this time I have stuff written down. Surprisingly enough, um, my premieres for Glee and Grey's Anatomy, I had like a page and a half written for both of them. And for Chicago Fire, I barely have a page. Barely. But I do have, I do have stuff written down and we're going to talk about it. First things first, I wrote down the names of all the people that I forgot. Um, surprisingly enough, I think I remembered most of their names after I did the video. So, but yeah. Um, I'll get to saying all those names anyway through the video. Uh, Renee's back from wherever it was that she went to for a few weeks or whatever. Um, and it's starting to seem like Kelly's getting a little suspicious. He's like trying to find out if the baby's really his or not. And he, it kind of seems like he's scared to find out, so he doesn't really want to know. Um, so that's happening with him. Um, Casey is watching Griffin and Ben, the Darden kids, because Heather is uh, in jail right now for uh, causing a accident. I don't know if I want to jump right into it. She gets into a car accident, she was the driver, so she's in jail right now, and Casey's watching the boys. Uh, they're hoping that they hear uh, good news about her friend Jen, who's in critical condition. They're thinking that if she gets better, that um, eventually they'll they'll let Heather out, because um, you know it's her first offense and she's a single mom and blah blah blah. So it's it, you know it doesn't seem to be too much of a problem at first. Um, Kelly's still dealing with whoever the arsonist is. He doesn't know who it is. They're trying to figure it out. Um, he thinks he has a lead. Uh, think some guy named Big John who had something to do with his uh, dad uh, a while back. Uh, I originally thought that the the fires had something to do with Kelly's dad so when I was watching through the episode I had assumed that Benny was involved somehow. Um, that turned out to not be the case but uh, that's what I was assuming uh, happened. There was a scene with Casey and the Darden boys. He was getting them ready for school and uh, he was having trouble taking care of them and stuff and then Gabby comes over and she helps him out a little bit and it was really sweet to see Gabby with the boys. Um, I guess because she's just really good at that sort of thing but it's kind of awkward for her uh, to be around Casey I guess. Um, and you can really see that throughout the whole episode, you can see that Griffin, being the older boy, is really struggling with everything that's going on, um, because he's still missing his dad, and now his mom's in jail. He doesn't know that in the beginning of the episode, but you can tell that he's struggling, and it's, it's kind of sad to watch. My boyfriend is back in this episode. Jesse Lee Sofer made another appearance. He had a few more lines than he did last time. He had two scenes, not one, but two scenes. Uh, I was so excited to see him, and I don't know if this is supposed to be a secret, because I couldn't find it anywhere, and I even asked the guy, myself, uh, what his character's first name was, because they still haven't said his first name, and they haven't released it anywhere, but I found out his first name. I don't know if I want to tell you guys yet, because I found out what it is. I, I'm gonna wait to see if maybe they'll mention it eventually. I'm, I'm assuming they'll mention it in uh, a future episode, since he's dating Gabby now, sort of, kind of. I don't know. I knew they were going to date from the minute he walked in and started talking to her. I was like, oh, great. Um, I kind of don't want them to get together because I kind of want him to be available for Sophia Bush's character in Chicago PD, but that's just me. Um, so... He's back, and I was super excited to see him, because I love him to bits. Um, hopefully they'll say his name 
in the next episode or so. If they don't, I'll let you guys know what it is because I know I wasn't the only person that was trying to figure out what his first name is because I think they're trying to keep it a secret for a reason. But shh. So, Jesse Lee Sofer's character, I can't say his name, um, he is asked out on a date, kind of, by Dawson. She invites him to this scotch tasting thing and they go back to Molly's after hours and she says, uh, grab some glasses and I'm gonna go get, uh, some champagne. So she walks into the back room and leaves her keys on the counter, uh, and Jesse's character <laughs> grabs the keys and runs over to the cash register and opens the register while she's not there, and he looks around and then he closes it and puts the keys back. And that's it. Like, it was so, it was so creepy and weird and you think, like, when he grabs the keys and runs over there, you think, oh my god, he's gonna grab the money and run, or whatever. He just opens it, so I don't know what his deal is because we know he's a cop. We know he's a detective working in the intelligence unit. I mean, we do. I guess a lot of the fans don't know it, but the fans that are following Chicago PD and following the actors uh, behind the scenes and stuff, they know he's a cop. So I'm thinking he's working some kind of case, but why Molly's would be involved at all, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but it was really weird and really creepy, and this look on his face was so weird. I just... I... I don't know. It was the creepiest thing. Um... So, I don't know what's up with this character, but we're gonna find out soon, I guess. I feel like something bad is going to happen uh, in terms of Mouch's campaign. I knew that he was gonna get all flustered when going to the firehouses to talk, uh, to talk about, you know, the things that he, you know, fired him up and stuff. I knew he was gonna get flustered, but I feel like something bigger is gonna happen that's gonna cause some problems. I'm not sure what, but I feel like something's gonna happen there, so... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, Antonio comes over to see Casey and tells him that Heather's friend Jen didn't make it. Because of that, <laughs> Heather is facing a manslaughter charge and he goes to see her in jail and she talks to him about how, um, they- she wrote in their in their wills, her and Andy's will, um, that Casey would be the one to take care of the kids if something happened to both of them, um, and she pleaded guilty to the crime, and that means she's going to be in jail for the next 15 months, um, and obviously the kids aren't too happy about that because they want to be with their mom. Uh, it was a really touching scene at the end. Casey was trying to explain to them that things would get better, and it was just really sweet, because Ben is the younger kid, he, uh, he was like, he goes, I want to live with my mom in jail, and it was just, it was, it was sweet, but it was really sad, because they just want their mom, they already lost their dad, and they don't want to lose their mom, too, um, I don't know where that's, where it's going to go from there, um, because, uh, we, I mean, we know Casey wanted kids, but he wants his own kids and he's not, I mean, I don't think he's going to take care of them forever. I don't know. I feel like anything could happen. Um, I don't know. <laughs> anything can happen. Oh, okay. So they found out, the, the firefighters in Firehouse 51 found out that there was a mole, so to speak, in the firehouse. Um, I think they're all pretty sure who it is. His name is Jeff Clark, by the way. Now I know his name. Uh, and he's working for Gail McLeod, by the way. I know her name. So, um, the Darden boys come to visit and, uh, Ben, the little one, uh, asks if he can climb up the ladder and they're like, oh, it's against union rules, uh, for visitors to do that, but you're not just any visitor, so why not? You know, because they've been through a lot with his dad, and they let him do it anyway. And Jeff Clark tells Gail McLeod uh, that that happened, and she talks to them at the end of the episode about how, 
you know, if something like that happens again, they're going to be in serious trouble, and that's when everyone goes, okay, we've got a snitch in the house. So no one's too thrilled about that. Severide talks to Renee about whether or not the baby is his, and she smacks him across the face and just walks out. Uh, but then at the end of the episode, she is packing her bags and she's crying, and she tells him that she had a one-night stand in Spain, um, and that the baby's not his, and she leaves, and it's really sad. Um, Shay tells him that they're gonna, they're gonna get the a three bedroom place um, so that they each can have a room, they can still live together, and that they can uh, put up a roommate whenever they need to. I feel like they're playing this out so that they can have a baby <laughs> eventually in the future. Um, I, I, that's just that's where I see it going. I'm not sure how it's gonna happen, but I feel like that's they're setting that up um, for Severide and, and Shay. Uh, towards the end of the episode, they get a call about a building on fire, and the building that's on fire just happens to be uh, Peter's uh, restaurant. Everyone's out, but the place is destroyed, and Mills is like, no, 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 we'll fix it, we'll fix it. Um, so he tells Chief Bowden that he wants to go back in, uh, and he tells him no. And Peter goes in anyway, um, he comes back out. By the skin of his teeth, no doubt, the place blows up like as soon as he jumps out of the building. Um, he went back in to get uh, his dad's medals and awards and stuff, and his mom gets mad at him for doing that, and Chief Bowden gets mad at him for doing that too. Um, but it was something he felt like he had to do. Um, he also finds in the restaurant that coil that was found at the other scenes um, with. Uh, that were attached to Severide, that they, the arsonist, basically. Um, that's when he mentions it to Kelly, and then Kelly is pretty sure he knows who it is. He tells everyone that he thinks it's a firefighter that started the fire, and um, everyone's like trying to understand. They're not believing it. And at this point, I still thought Benny had something to do with it because. Um, you know, because of what had happened with him and, and Peter's dad, Henry, and, um, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know where I got all my facts, uh, or initially why he would have been, you know, causing problems for, for Kelly, too, but I had, I thought he had something to do with it, and then he was in this episode, and I was like, oh my god, it has to be him. Uh, so... Uh, Kelly thinks he knows who the arsonist is. So at the very end of the episode, Kelly goes to this bar to meet who he thinks is the arsonist. And he, uh, he has absolutely every right to believe that that person is involved because the person he thinks is the arsonist is Hadley. Uh, so obviously when he left Firehouse 51, he was mad at Kelly and uh, Mills, uh, so he's taking his anger on them because he can't get a job and and because he's crazy, I guess. I'm hoping we'll get to see more of uh, Jesse Lee Sofer and John Cita and Leroy Hawkins and everyone else that's going to be in Chicago PD. I wish that they would show us uh, Patrick Pfluger and Sophia Bush, um, I don't know where Voight's been these last few episodes, but I'd like to see Voight sometime soon. So that was Chicago Fire 202, and I'll see you guys next week for 203.